Good morning, viewers, subscribers, Kingdom Saints. This upload is for tips on evangelizing. We all need tips, don't we? Oh, uh, by the way, welcome to my channel. Yeah, we all need tips. And one of the most important things to keep in mind when you're out on the streets preaching the good word of the good Lord, hallelujah, is patience. Patience is key. You gotta have patience. You gotta have the patience of Jesus. Let's start with my notes. Let's start with my notes. God has called each of us to partner with him in his redemptive plan. Some of the greatest joys in the Christian life come from making Jesus known to those who don't yet know him personally. There's many out there, many, I'm saying, underline that word, many. There's many people out there who know Jesus, and don't want to be affiliated and don't want to know Jesus at all. Those are what we call the hard-hearted ones. Don't worry about them. You're going out to preach the, the word to the people who want to hear for every ear that can hear it. They want to hear. So don't worry about the, the ones that just, and the ones that give you negativity. We come across that every time we go out. As the body of Christ, we are Jesus' hands and feet on earth to continue the work that he began. To continue the work that he began. Remember, it was Jesus who went from Samaria to Decapolis to Galilee all over the place, preaching the word. That was his main objective, was preaching the word. As finite beings, we do not have the foresight of knowing the cravings and challenges of each individual we meet. However, God knows the deepest secrets of every person. Through the Holy Spirit, he is more than able to speak through us to touch the depths of the human heart. Only the Spirit can give us the words to convict and compel others to follow Christ. Only the Spirit. You got to work with the Holy Spirit each and every time because the Spirit is and always will be everlasting. Amen. And the Spirit knows the hearts. Oops. The Spirit knows the hearts of every individual on this planet. Amen. Be led by the Holy Spirit. This is from Acts 16.6, 6, Acts 9.10. Be led by the Holy Spirit, not by you, not by the flesh. Be led by the Holy Spirit. It's been many times when I'm out there. And, uh, you know, I'm one of those loud ones. I preach hard. I preach uh, hellfire gospel. I preach come to Jesus now kind of gospel. I preach the truth, but I also preach the truth. Because people don't want to hear stuff like, oh, you're okay. You can sin. God will forgive you. God is, we have a God of love. This is what the, 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 the ones who make up their own, who make their own way, but you got to do it Yahweh, not our way. You know what I'm saying? You got to do it Yahweh. His way is always the best way. Wouldn't you agree? So yeah, you gotta pre. I mean, everybody has their own style of evangelizing, their own style of preaching. You know what I'm saying? As long as it coincides with the word, with God's word, and as long as you're not being abrasive, disrespectful, or just plain arrogant, 
you're good to go. You gotta, you gotta show love. You gotta preach love. You gotta preach out of love. And you gotta let them know that Jesus loves everybody. We're not there to condemn no one. We're not there to criticize no one. You know what I'm saying? We preach the word. We plant the seed. God does the rest. Gain God's perspective. What is your motivation for evangelism? Are we just doing it because it is the Christian thing to do? Are we doing it to try to please God by our good works? It's not about good works. For we are saved by grace through faith, not of our own works, so that no one may boast. Preaching is not a requirement for salvation. Keep that in mind. It's not about works. We are saved by grace through what? Faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Pray and ask the Father to give you his heart for the lost. When God shares his breaking heart with us, we will share his burden for the lost. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that... It's not necessary to evangelize, but it's not a salvation issue. It's not a salvation issue. It is obligated for us to do it because Jesus commanded the disciples to go out and preach the gospel to all nations. But it's not a salvation issue. Many people, a lot of people don't have time or or, or they have jobs that don't allow them to go out and then they got to take care of their families at home and other responsibilities, you know, they might not have some, but you can evangelize at your job. You can evangelize by just going out with your family. You can evangelize by just going up the street, by just showing the love of Jesus, somebody, telling somebody about Jesus. You can evangelize that way at the supermarket. Wherever you are, Six Flags with your kids and you see people around. Me personally, if I was to go to Six Flags right now, because I remember when I used to go to Six Flags, I used to have the best time of my life. You know what I'm saying? I go on all the rides. Well, not the high rides. I wouldn't go on them roller coaster things. Nah, that's not my style. For one, I'm scared of heights. But if I go there now, I'm taking my uh, my my Bible with me. I'm going to be evangelizing. I'm going to go on some rides, but I'm going to also be evangelizing. Incognito, as we say. So then, whatever it is, it is your style. I mean, you can just give testimony. If you don't want to preach, you can just give testimony. Tell people how important it is for them to come to Jesus. That's evangelizing. I mean, you don't have to know the Bible word for word from start to finish, you know, back to back. It helps. It helps. It helps to know the whole Bible. But what you really need to know is, really, really need to know is the gospel. You got to know the gospel because that's the, that's the whole of the Bible is the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is God's only son provides eternal life. God's only son provides eternal life. And you also got to tell everybody about the grace of God. What is grace? God's riches at Christ's expense. God's riches at Christ's expense. And make sure you're speaking from the real Bible. What is the Bible? Basic, basic instructions before leaving earth. Basic instructions before leaving earth. That's the Bible. If you go along with these three things, you'll be good to go, brother, sister. You know what I'm saying? You know, I got a comment before. I got a comment. Maybe I think it was two comments from two different occasions 
on two different videos that I posted on YouTube. One of them said, oh, he's with a woman and she's evangelizing. And I had to school this person. Scriptures doesn't say that a woman can't evangelize. God has called everybody to evangelize. Scripture says God will pour out his spirit on all flesh. There is no distinction between Jew, Greek, male, female. So women can, the woman that I'm with, she knows who she is, fire lady. She preaches, she evangelizes better than a lot of males that are, that was in my ministry. She evangelizes a lot better. And she's an asset to my team. You know what I'm saying? And me and her, we go out more than anybody on my team. We go out more than anybody because we're like real close, you know, real tight. And uh, you got to have a good, solid team. You got to have people in your team, on your team, that know the word, know that know Jesus, that are filled with the goodness and that are filled with the Holy Spirit. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't say you have to do this. I ask them if they want to evangelize. I ask people if they want to join our team, but you have to be a Christian to evangelize or want to be a disciple or want to learn. You know what I'm saying? But before you get that mic, you better know what you're saying because you're going to be talking to everybody on the streets. You know what I'm saying? Don't preach the wrong gospel. Don't preach the wrong gospel. Don't be like those that are preaching the wrong gospel, the wrong doctrines. They're preaching what they want the people to hear. They're preaching stuff to make them feel good. We don't preach about stuff like that. We preach the gospel to help you to get saved. We don't care if you feel good or not. We don't want you to feel good. That's the whole point. Because when you don't, when you hear the gospel and you're not feeling good about it, Nine times out of ten, that's the Holy Spirit convicting somebody. We want them to feel so bad that they're going to come to the evangelism team and say, I want Jesus. I want a new life. I want to be baptized. I want my life to change. I want Jesus to change my life because I can't do it myself. Another important thing to remember is to discern soul cravings. I believe everyone has cravings for purpose, meaning, and significance in life. By listening to and speaking into a person's cravings, you can delicately awaken, delicately awaken them to recognize that the fulfillment of all their deepest cravings can best be found in God himself. Soul cravings is very vital because everybody's going through something, you know. Sometimes when I'm evangelizing, I put myself in other people's shoes because I've been there, done that. And I can give them testimony on how the Lord brought me out of everything that they've been in or that they're going through right now. And I even tell them, I dare you to pray in the middle of it. I dare you to pray in the middle of your storm. Because when they start praying, things happen. When they start praying, things happen. When you ask for Jesus, you will receive. Develop relationships. Jesus was the complete expression of the Father's love to the world. The love of God flowed like a spring of living water from the life of Jesus. I believe that in many cases, Godless, God's love can be more compelling than scientific evidence of God or a theological argument. Is God's love flowing through you? Are people in your life compelled by how passionately and personally you care about them? If you have few non-Christian friends, try this challenge. 
to move beyond the walls of the church. I like that. Beyond the walls of the church. Because going to church doesn't make you a Christian. Some people have been going to church all their lives and they're still not saved. They don't know Jesus. You have to bring the gospel, what we call outreach, beyond the walls of the church. It's not just going to church and praying for people and stuff like that. Matter of fact, most churches nowadays don't even pray for people. They just go have their little show and then they leave. Oh, the humanity. <laughs> no, no. In my opinion, and what I wish is, is that each and every church in the world would have outreach evangelism. You know what I'm saying? We'll go out once a week. It don't got to be every Sunday. Once a week. It can be on a weekday. It can be on a day that everybody's adequate, everybody is comfortable with. You know what I'm saying? But at least go out and preach the gospel and and have outreach, you know, food, food drives, whatever, laying hands on people, the hands on people, the laying on of hands or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Every church should have that. That's what church is all about. That's what God's church is all about, I mean. Okay, what's our next on my notes is share your story. Share your story. People are deeply moved and motivated by your story, by your testimony. Because when you share your story, they can see themselves in the story that you are describing to them about you. They can see themselves. They can relate to it. That will make them more comfortable, more at ease. It will relieve their tensions, and they'll come, and they'll, 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 they'll want that change because the Holy Spirit will move in them and bring them to the kingdom of the Most High God, Jehovah. You have a very powerful story, and God wants you to use it. People will be most compelled by your thoughts and experiences because they know you. If Jesus is a tangible reality in your life, others will see that and they will want it. And be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Acts 1. Verse 8, allow the Holy Spirit to take over the conversation and know with confidence that God will lead you and give you the right words to say to the right individuals. There's many, 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 many out there who need to hear the word of God. It's like uh, when you're fishing. It's like when you're fishing and you throw that line out. You're waiting for that fish. You're waiting for that fish. You're just waiting for that fish. While you're preaching, you're waiting for that fish. Okay, and you're preaching. And you got a bait. You got a hook. Somebody's on your line. You got to reel them in slowly. Reel them in. Then you reel them in and you got, uh, Jesus said, um, Jesus said, come with me and I will make you fishers of men. Come with me and I will make you fishers of men. And the, 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 um, the witness that he said that to didn't understand what he was saying. So what is he talking about? But he was amazed by the grace of Jesus and he told his friends about the man who, who has so much grace and so much wisdom and how he felt 
the light of Jesus inside of him, the light of this man inside of him. And he was telling all these men about it. And he said, I will become a, he, said, he told me I will be a fisher of men. So they followed him. He said, here, I'll show you to him. And they followed him. And they was talking to Jesus and they felt the same way. And he said, Esther, I met, I brought all these men to you. And now I know what you mean because you just made me a fisher of men. Amen? A fisher of men. So yeah, I mean, all we do is preach the gospel, show them the love of Jesus, share testimonies. You know what I'm saying? God does the rest. Don't get discouraged. Don't get sad because of the rejection or the reactions of people. Because Jesus said, we're going to be hated. We're going to be persecuted. He was. So don't worry about that. That's just part of the overall world that we live in. That's just how. You, no, and not everybody wants to be saved. We reach out to the ones who want to be saved, who wants to hear the word, and wants to know what to do to come to Jesus. You know what I'm saying? So don't worry about them. Not a day goes by that I regret going out and evangelizing. Or I feel bad afterwards. No, I don't have none of those feelings. Because I know when I'm walking with Jesus and I'm doing God's will, I have the victory. You know what I'm saying? Because I guarantee you, you might not think that somebody's hearing you or listening, but they are. If it don't hit them right, right away, it's going to hit them sooner or later. But they heard the word. Somebody's listening. And what you say while you're out evangelizing, if you don't see results that same day, that following week, somebody might heard, might have heard your testimony or heard you preaching the good word, and it's going to hit them. And they're going to go to their church, and they're going to want to get saved, and they do get saved. Why? Not because they didn't come to you but because they heard what you were saying. They heard the good word of the Lord Jesus. Amen, amen. You know what I'm saying? Some people say the Lord works in mysterious ways, but not me, not to me. He doesn't work in mysterious ways to me because we know him. We know him. We know him, that he's gonna do what he said he's gonna do. And he's going to fulfill all his, all of his promises. You know what I'm saying? So that sometimes all it takes is one little testimony to bring somebody to Jesus. Even if it's not on that day with, with the evangelistic team, they might go to their church next week based on what they heard from you. Am I right about it? Let's move on to the next one, shall we? Be patient and be faithful. For many people, evangelism can be very discouraging because they don't see immediate results. Though the ultimate goal of all evangelism is to lead people to Christ, it may not happen overnight. We must remember that only God and only God knows when the seeds we plant will bear fruit. And that's God's responsibility. That's God's job. That's what God does. He tugs at people's hearts. That's called the Holy Spirit. Tugging at people's hearts to bring them to the goodness of Jesus. You know what scripture says? Scripture says, those that know it, my son, 
shalt have eternal life. But those that know it not of my son are already condemned. Scriptures also says that God has written his words on our hearts. His words on our hearts and his knowledge is in us. We are without excuse. Remember that people are on a journey. Each person is in a different place or approaching a different spiritual threshold in their journey and some may not be ready to fully commit their lives to Christ. Our responsibility is to simply lead them further down the path and bring them closer to finding a relationship with Jesus because somebody could be walking by and hearing you and they had Jesus on their mind. They was thinking about coming to Jesus earlier that day or earlier that week or even last month. And they may, may have forgotten about it, but they hear you and they'll, they'll think to themselves, oh yeah, I was, I was going to get saved last week. I was going to learn more about Jesus last week or yesterday or the month before. You just reminded that person. That person might just do that that same day because they heard it from you. You reminded them. Oh, here's another one that's very important. Pray unceasingly. Pray unceasingly. One of the most essential components of evangelism is prayer. You may have loved you may have loved ones or friends for whom you have been continually praying for years. Do not give up hope. Prayer is in the catalyst that initiates God's will being done on the earth. And always remember that it's not up to you. It's not up to you. Successful witnessing is simply sharing Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit and leaving the results to God. If you have taken the opportunity to talk about Jesus with someone in the power of the Spirit, then you have been successful. If you have taken the opportunity to, to talk to someone in the power of the Holy Spirit, you have been successful. Also, avoid confrontations because the devil will try to get you to change your character. The devil will try to get you to act out in the flesh. He will try. But don't give him the opportunity. Just say, not today, Satan. Can't you see? I gave you back everything you ever gave me, and I have the victory, for it is Jesus who set me free, and I give him my life because I know I'm going to be with him eternally. It is he that snatched me from that evil grasp of Satan. It is he that opened my eyes and showed me the mistakes I was making. It is he that lives within. It is he that took away all of my sins. It is he that made this wretched man whole and made this wretched man complete. It is he that gives me the authority to trample the enemy's head every day with my feet. It is he who I worship and adore. And it is he whose blood for me was poured. Amen. Am I right about it? Don't ever give Satan the opportunity to steal your joy because that's when he, that's what he hates the most is when we're out there preaching the word. He doesn't like that one bit. Matter of fact, he whistles to his demons to surround us. But guess what? We're already surrounded by legions of angels. 
and we have the highest power, the highest authority in the whole world. Our commander in chief is Jesus. And he is the greatest general that ever, ever lived. So don't worry about anything because we are vessels of the Most High God. And he is using us, you, me, and everybody else walking in Christ to build up the kingdom of God that's standing on the foundation of Jesus. Amen? So then, don't worry about anything, my friends. Don't be inhibited. And don't say, I can't do it. Because in heaven, that word can't does not exist. God changed that word to can because he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So anyway, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And y'all have a blessed day. Thanks for watching. I love you all, my kingdom saints, viewers, and subscribers.